Good day everyone, this is the second video for our lecture series on research. So the title of this segment is Elements of a Research and this is just a part one. Okay, I am Abigail Gomez and I am your facilitator of learning for today. Let's begin. To discuss the elements of a research, there are three important things that you have to consider. In a traditional research, and let me reiterate, traditional, okay. With this traditional research, the preliminaries would be containing these parts, the title page, approval sheet, acknowledgement, the abstract, biographical data, letter or note to the readers, table of contents, list of tables, list of figures, and also the list of appendices. The second, the second part is the body, and this tells you whether the research is actually traditional or modern. Why? The traditional contains five chapters, and those five chapters are introduction, review of related literature, methodology, results and discussion, and the last one which is summary, conclusions, and recommendations. Then the third part of the research would be the references and the appendices. The, res the references contain the systematic list of all the authors you have cited inside your research. Moreover, these would be the authors who help you conceptualize or create the problem which you have for your research. Then the appendices would be the various documents that you have used, like the instruments, the letters, okay, and the consent. So these are the basic elements of a research. And you can see on the next slide that there are less details here for the body because this is the modern type of research that we have right now. Journal management would be accepting the IMRED format. You can see in the body part that the contents would be the introduction, methodology, or methods, results, and discussion. So you can see that a big chunk of research has been removed. And from the traditional, you can see that there was the review of related literature. And for this part, it is now gone. So why is it that in the modern research, the RRL is no longer included. Does it mean that reviewing a literature is no longer important? Well, definitely, it doesn't mean that way. But the review of related literature is already embedded inside the introduction. So while keeping the background of the study, different literatures are already cited here. And then the recommendations are also not yet included in the modern research because um, it paves as the way for some readers to really read your research and come up with their own research gap. And that research gap would be their chance to create another study out of your own study. Then for the references, you can see here that the appendices are no longer included, but then of course, again, this is still dependent on the university where you are enrolled. Again, the traditional, there are five chapters, but for the modern, we only have four chapters, which is the IMRAD. And you can see also that from the, tra from the traditional, the results and discussion are partnered, but for the modern, they are separate here. But for the preliminaries, more or less, they are similar. Let's begin. This would be the parts of the preliminary pages, or what we call the preliminaries. First is the title page. The title page contains definitely your title. And then the submission details. The submission details would be the department where you are submitting your research, the college, where you are um, seeking for an approval. And then it also includes the name of the author or at times authors. Then 
the date of submission or sometimes students usually do is to add the month of their graduation month and year second is the approval sheet the approval sheet is a statement wherein the panelists or the members of the research committee are approving your research so there are instances that they are including the grade in the approval sheet again this is dependent on the university but there are some universities who do not place any grade at all so the approval sheet contains the names and signatories of the department chairperson the college dean the thesis advisor and also the technical critic third is the acknowledgement the acknowledgement is as simple as a statement of gratitude so this gratitude would be given to many people the researcher would be listing these people whom they are expressing their gratitude of and then the abstract oh but before the abstract let me just remind everyone when you are doing your acknowledgement please please do not um please do not write in your acknowledgement that in the last part last part so definitely this would be at the bottom at the last part you will say and above all to god almighty okay so you should avoid that if you want to put god above all then in the acknowledgement put him first do not put him at the last part okay and then for the abstract that is actually the summary of your research so your five months long of preparing your research or maybe 10 months long or maybe a year or two then it will be reduced to one or two pages of an abstract according to the american psychological association a standard abstract should be consisting of at maximum of a maximum of 120 words but again there are some journal management companies who actually receive even up to 200 words therefore an abstract will actually play in between 120 to 200 words next is the biographical data the biographical data is a narration of the authors who they are it's a biographical sketch of the authors who they are where they are from what are their interests um, what are their achievements in life academic achievements or personal achievements these can be written in the biographical data number six is again dependent on the university there are some universities who are requesting to give a letter or note to the readers and this is the time that they are telling the readers how hard how much effort that they've given to the research and what possible inspiration can they extract from that kind of research then seven table of contents this is just easy but you just have to follow the rules or the form and style of your university then the list of tables figures and also the appendices so on the right side of the panel here you can see that parts and order depend on the research manual per university next is the body so i've mentioned a while ago that the body for a traditional research consists of five chapters but if you take a look at them for the modern we have the intro the methodology results and discussion so basically this this presentation will still cover both the traditional and also the modern okay so you can see in a traditional research number one two and three chapters one two three they are being created when you are doing your research proposal so 
those three chapters must be complete before you can present in a colloquium or in a research proposal or even in a funding of research. Those three must be evident. And when you create your proposal, do not forget that the tense of your verse will be in a future tense. So the researchers will, the objectives of the study will be, okay, so future tense. Breaking them down, introduction is the careful presentation of the importance and validity of the problem. Moreover, it should catch the interest and attention of the readers. Then it must be concise and complete to present a clear picture of the research gap or the so-called blind spot. In the succeeding videos, I will teach you how to look for a particular blind spot or particular research gap. Then the review of related literature presents various in-text citations from various authors of books, journals, foreign studies, magazines, papers in conference, symposium, or fora. Then these literatures help build the credibility of the proposal, reliability or soundness of the methodology, and the relevance of the study being proposed. What I usually tell my students is that when they create their review of related literature, it must be aligned as to how the introduction was created. So if it is done in a deductive way, then the RRL should also be given in a deductive way. Next is the methodology. So what the others say is that methodology is the most important part of the research proposal. It's actually the, it's the energy. It's, it's the gas, it's the, it's the fuel, okay? So this is the one which will ignite the research. This is the one which will, this is the one which will show how the research will proceed. Next, a detailed methodology shows how the research will be according to plan. Okay, then it provides the design, population and sampling of participants or respondents, statistical treatment, the instrument used, the data to be gathered, and also ethical considerations for the research. So, you can see here that I use the word participants or respondents. Again, it depends on your university, but... There are some people who are saying that respondents are just the ones who respond to a survey. So maybe because they are being forced to do so and take note being forced is not ethical. Okay. Or because it was given inside a class or, or somebody requests for it. But participants would be the voluntary participation in a study. Next is the results and discussion. So what is good about research is that it has to be aligned. From your introduction, you have created your problem and then that problem will be treated maybe statistically or not in the methodology, then the results will be given for that particular problem. So, SOP1, Method 1, Result 1, Discussion 1. It should be aligned horizontally. So, the results, this would be the presentation, analysis, interpretation, and discussion in the study. It can be given through graphs, through tables, or through pie charts, or even infographics. And then, the results of the study should be following the order or the chronological order of the statement of the problem or the SOP. And also, a good discussion would be by using different literatures to support, confirm, or contradict the findings of the study. 
So the summary conclusions and recommendation, it highlights the significant, take note of the word significant, findings of the study, then the conclusions and recommendations are yielded by the researchers from such findings. And then, of course, the references are written systematically using a university-approved format. Then, the entries are arranged alphabetically, as mentioned. Then, the documents to be placed are, of course, only those vital documents which actually help you with the success of your study. The nitty-gritty of the computation is no longer needed in the in the appendices but the summary of the computation may be included and that would be all for this session or for this video thank you very much if you have any questions you may just email me on the email flash on your screen and i hope you have time to like and subscribe this channel this is abigail gomez Bye.